Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. In this gonioscopic course, today we are studying the gonioscopic grading of angles and how to represent that gradings or the very structure of the angle on a diagram which is called the gonio diagram or a goniogram. So first, what are the grading systems which are available to grade the angle of anterior chamber? It is the Schaffer's classification, the Spieth, the Shees, the RPC classification or the Rajendra Prasad Center for Ophthalmic Sciences classification for the grading of the gonioscopic angle. So first let us discuss about the Schaffer system. The Schaffer system basically classifies the grade or classifies or grades the anterior chamber angle based on the width of the anterior chamber angle whether it is 10, 20, 30 or 45. So let us see how uh, this grading is done. So in the Schaffer system as you can see in this table okay the zero grade represents the zero degree angle that means the cornea and the iris are almost uh, in close opposition to each other and the angle is set to be closed uh, then we have the slit angle in which uh, the angle is like a slit and then we have one two three and four now as you can see grade one is about 10 degrees or less than 10 degrees two is 20 degrees three is about 20 to 35 that means average you can remember 30 degrees and 4 is 35 to 45 so average you can remember 40 degrees so it is very easy to remember so if you remember the uh, grades of the angle and just remember the first number of the angle so 1 will be 1010 2 is 2020 3 is 3030 and 4 is 4040 now in this system of grading by Schaffer's you can see that grade 4 is a wide open angle grade 3 is also wide open angle from grade 2 onwards to 0 the, those are the narrow to closed angles so this is how you, uh, you are supposed to remember so what is important here is that the grade 4 means it is 40 degrees angle width and that means it's a wide open angle after the Schaffer's classification which was classifying the gonioscopic angle based upon the width of the angle now we have the spath classification or the spath system now in this system we have various uh, factors that we'll take into consideration so number one is the level of iris insertion so where is the iris inserting onto the angle number two the angular width of the angle reset that means just like the uh, Schaffer system what is the width of the angle then the configuration of the iris how what's the shape of the iris and finally the pigmentation that is the trabecular meshwork pigmentation now if you want to remember i will give you a mnemonic pica okay so p is for pigmentation i is insertion c is the configuration of the iris and a is the angle width so let us see each of these one by one so the first one that is the insertion of the iris root now the iris root or the iris can get inserted at various levels in the angle based on based on which the spath uh, the spath classification has graded it into a b c d and e so a represents that the iris is inserted anterior to the schwalbe's line now in my video on the anatomy i told you that the schwalbe's line is the most anterior right so if the iris is inserted anterior to the schwalbe's line or at the schwalbe's line it is represented as grade a okay then we have grade b that means the iris root is now inserted behind the schwalbe's line and grade c is that it is centered on to the scleral spur because after the Schwalbe's line we have trabecular meshwork and then we have the scleral spur okay so in the C it is centered right on to the scleral spur and grade D is it is more deeper to the scleral spur that means somewhere behind the scleral spur and E is it is extremely deep that means it is inserted on to the ciliary body and in these cases you'll also be able to see a ciliary body band okay so this is a b c d and e so remember a is anterior to the schwalbe's line b is behind the schwalbe's line that means somewhere on the trabecular meshwork c is on the scleral spur and d is deeper to the scleral spur behind the scleral spur and e is extremely deep that means on to the ciliary body band 
Then the next factor, like just like the Schoffer's classification, here also in the spathe we have the angular width, in which again we have slit 10 degrees, 20, 30, and 40. And just like there, I told you that 30 to 40 is mostly wide, and slit 10 to 20 degrees is narrow angle. So this factor is also considered in the spathe classification. Then we have the configuration of the peripheral iris. So the iris configuration could be like this. Okay, so the iris could be convex. So such a convex iris is called a steep iris represented by the letter S or the iris could be flat like this. So that is called a regular iris or flat iris represented by the letter R or the iris could be like this queer. Okay, it is called the queer or Q and it is concave iris like this. Okay, so based on whether it is steep, regular or queer, we can represent it as S, R and Q. Then finally, we have the pigmentation of the iris or sorry, the pigmentation of the trabecular meshwork, which is again represented by minimal, mild, moderate and severe. And subsequently, the numbers are given as plus one, plus two, plus three and plus four. Now, this uh, table over here actually summarizes the spades gonioscopic grading based upon, as you know, we have the iris insertion a b c d e and then in e as you can see even more than one mm of ciliary body band is going to be seen then the angular approach or the angle recess from 0 to 40 or 50 then the peripheral iris configuration whether it is regular steep or cured and uh, uh, in steep we have two types bored anteriorly or they could be a plateau iris and cure is basically the concave one pigmentation of trabecular meshwork 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and and plus four is intense or dense pigmentation now this is how we actually represent uh, after doing a spades classification or the spades grading so what does this notation mean in this picture now what did i tell you about b and c b means that it is inserted behind the shawl base line and c means that it is inserted onto the skeletal spur now when b is put it in the bracket it means that before indentation we were able to see up to the shawl base line okay and then after indentation this the trabecular meshwork was also visible and it means that the iris is inserted on the skeletal spur okay so that is how the notation is written so in parasynthesis whatever you put in the parasynthesis it means that or in the bracket it means that it is before doing the indentation okay then after you indent, uh, indent and you see the structures so that letter or that grading will come after the brackets right and then the number over here 30 represents the angle width so 30 means it is 30 degrees and r represents that it is a regular iris now after that the pigmentation is represented by putting a slash and then it is two plus pigmentation okay so it is the two plus trabecular meshwork pigmentation so this is how you uh, put the notation in the spades classification coming to the skis classification system which is totally opposite to that of the shaffers and of the uh, spade classification now why do i call it a uh, uh, opposite classification is that because in both the previous two con uh, classifications that we have seen grade 4 basically man meant that it was a wide open angle however in the sheets or the skis classification grade 4 actually means that the angle is closed and now so that is a differencing uh, very uh, important differentiating point between these classifications next the sheets classification or skis classification basically is classifying based on the structures that you can see uh, while doing the cuneoscopy. So grade zero means it is a wide open angle and you are able to see the ciliary body band very well. Almost about more than one mm will be the width of the ciliary body band. So it is a wide open angle and there is no angle closure. Now grade one means that the ciliary body band will now get narrowed however still you can see some of the angles still you can see all the angle structures and there is no angle closure grade 2 means now the ciliary body band is not seen and you can see only up to the scleral spur so this is also an open angle but the closure is very unlikely in this case now coming to the grade 3 in grade 3 now you will be able to see uh, a part of the anterior trabecular meshwork but maybe not the posterior trabecular meshwork right so that is important so in grade 2 you are able to see the scleral spur along with the trabecular meshwork as well 
okay and grade 3 the posterior trabecular meshwork however will not be seen it means that you will able to, you will be able to see the schwal base line and the anterior trabecular meshwork your posterior trabecular meshwork will not be seen in grade 3 and such an angle is called an occludable angle or the closure is also likely in this case coming to grade 4 is gonioscopically closed angle in which you will not be able to see any structure okay so this is how it is represented diagrammatically so we have wide open angle which is represented by grade uh, 0 so you can see in the wide open angle the entire thing even the ciliary body band is completely seen in slightly narrowed angle that is grade 1 the ciliary body band is seen but it is slightly narrower compared to the uh, wide open angle that is grade 0. Then you come to the grade 2. In grade 2 you will see the scleral spur and then if because you can see the scleral spur even the other structures which are anterior to it will be seen and in grade 3 the scleral spur is not seen the posterior one the half of the trabecular meshwork is also not seen so what does it mean only the schwal base line and the anterior trabecular meshwork will be seen and then we have the grade 4 in which even these structures the trabecular meshwork will not be seen at all okay so so that is very important that skis classification is slightly opposite to the other classifications and then it is also classifying based upon the structures that are visible while doing the gonioscopy so the ski system also takes into consideration the pigmentation okay so that is also graded from one two three and four so you can see in four there is a lot of pigmentation and then zero and one there is almost no pigmentation now there's a new classification which is given by the Rajendra Prasad Institute and it's also called the RP Center classification. In this RP Center classification we have six grades. So grade zero means it is a closed angle in which there is no dipping of the slit lamp beam. Now here let me tell you that the RP Center is also similar to Schaffer's and it is also similar to the spades classification why am i telling you it is similar because here also the open angles are given the greater number this is in difference to the skis classification in which it was totally opposite in skis classification the greater number means that the grade 4 means that the angle is closed but in all the other classification the greater numbers mean that the angles is open okay so grade 0 means in rp center that the angle is closed and you don't see any dipping of the slit lamp beam. So what happens is normally when we do a gonioscopy, the light rays that we see, it also going to dip inside. Okay, so that will dip, the dipping will indicate that there's a convex iris configuration and then the angle, uh, when the light beam is going into the angle recess, it is dipping, right? So in grade zero close, there is no dipping of the slit lamp beam. That means the iris is inserted just like that on the shawl base line probably and there's almost no angle recess. Grade one means there is dipping of the ang uh, ang uh, dipping of the beam that you put on the gonioscopy. Grade two is the schwal base line and the anterior third of the trabecular meshwork is seen. Grade 3 is even the posterior two third of the trabecular meshwork will be seen, right? So in grade 3 according to the RP center classification, the entire trabecular meshwork will be seen. Now in grade 4, even more posterior that means the scleral spur will be seen. In grade 5, the ciliary body band is seen and in grade 6, even the iris and the last roll of the iris which is present, okay, that will also be seen. So, it is a very deep or very really wide open angle. So, in this grade, grade 3 or less is considered to be narrow according to the RP center. Now, so this table just summarizes the all the classifications that we have seen okay so here it is only the she's which is, you can see the arrow is moving in totally opposite direction and Schaffer, spath and rp center are moving in the downward direction like this so that's important now how do you actually represent the findings that you have seen on gonioscopy diagrammatically on a paper so either you can use a Schaffer's goniogram or a becker's goniogram or you can use a rich a gonio diagram which is basically a cross now this is the becker's goniogram now this might look very complicated so here as you can see this four lines these are representing the mirrors in which we are going to see the structure 
okay so as we know that the superior mirror is going to show the inferior angle so whatever you see in the superior mirror you have to represent it in the inferior angle whatever you see in the inferior mirror you have to represent in the superior angle okay so this is how the goniogram is going to be drawn if you want to simplify this diagram basically you will have the outermost circle which will represent the Schwalbe's line and then we have a circle inside which represent the scleral spur. Now we know that in between them we will have the trabecular meshwork. So the trabecular meshwork is represented by two circles which are drawn in between the scleral spur and the uh, Schwalbe's line and inside we have three more circles which will actually be uh, used to represent the insertion of the iris. Okay. Uh, so where is exactly the iris getting inserted so that makes this uh, goniog diagram a little bit complicated kind of diagram so this is how the simplified version can be drawn in which you can draw basically three circles you can represent the inside one the scleral spur the outside is swalby's line and in between you can draw the trabecular meshwork okay now here uh, in this picture what happens is that if you want to represent a gonio sinicase okay so the second yeah so in this picture as you can see here what i've drawn in a brown color we can see that this is coming from almost a scleral spur area and here we have basically the iris with the pupil so any connection between the iris and the schwalbe's line or up to the cornea is represent is called the peripheral anterior sinicae so this is your peripheral anterior sinicae now similarly if you want to represent a gonio sinicae that is coming from the iris up to the trabecular meshwork only so that will be represented like this as i've shown here so this is a gonio sinicae so gonio sinicae and the previous one that i showed you is a peripheral anterior sinicae or the pass now apart from that we can also have the new vessels which uh, as i told you they usually cross the scleral spur so they can be represented like this and then we have the angle recession the angle recession is usually represented in this brown color uh, with two lines as drawn like this which will represent the split between the ciliary and the longitudinal uh, the circular and the longitudinal muscle fibers of the ciliary body then the membranes are usually drawn uh, in the trabecular meshwork area with yellow pigment and then if there's any peripheral irid uh, iridectomy or iridotomy it can be drawn like this on in a black color uh, pencil and you have to draw it on the iris a peripheral iridectomy or iridotomy and apart from that the level of iris insertion should also be represented like this in a brown color but the only difference is that you have to represent it with the oblique lines okay the the pass or the gonio sinicae they can be represented with full colors or you can use a horizontal lines but in order to depict the level of iris insertion uh, you it's better to use the oblique lines like this okay and that will tell you the level of iris insertion or you can use the simpler rich cross diagram or the gonio diagram in which you can draw the four quadrants like this using these two crosses and then you can uh, mention the details of the angle structure that you can see so if you see scleral spur in all the quadrants you mention it like this ss 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 or if you see the ciliary body band you mention ciliary body band here or if you see atm here you mention atm or if you see the posterior trabecular meshwork that could be mentioned like this and similarly here only you can represent if there is angle recession you can represent it like this using the brown color Similarly, new vessels can be represented in the quadrant that you see them. And uh, so this is the picture which is taken uh, from the uh, Beckers and Schoffer's textbook. So here also you can see they have used simplified diagram. The inner circle representing the scleral spur. The outside is the Schwalbe's line and in between is the trabecular meshwork. The peripheral anterior sinicae is drawn like this. And the same way you can use this uh, cross diagram also. And you can represent the structures that you see. And you can represent the peripheral anterior sinicae like this. So this was about the grading and the diagrammatic representation of the gonioscopy structures. Thank you and have a nice day.